Dear students, today we are going to study in brief about the coveted place of Goswami Tulsi Das, who was a pioneer poet and saint in Bhakti movement. While throwing light on the contribution of Goswami Tulsi Das, some basic and general questions which often come to our mind are from which region of India Goswami Tulsi Das hailed? during which period his work and thought philosophy influenced the bhakti movement what are his significant literary contributions his teachings are placed on which principles and how he was instrumental in bringing about a change in the spiritual philosophical and social perspectives of india during his lifetime tulsidas also known as goswami tulsidas was a Hindu poet, saint, reformer and philosopher renowned for his devotion for the god Ram. A composer of several popular works, he is best known for being the author of the epic Ram Charit Manas, a retelling of the Sanskrit Ramayana in the vernacular Avdhi. Tulsidas was acclaimed in his lifetime to be a reincarnation of Valmiki, the composer of the original Ramayana in Sanskrit. He is also considered to be the composer of the Hanuman Chalisa, a popular devotional hymn dedicated to Hanuman, the divine monkey god and devotee of Rama. He was the foremost in popularizing Rama cult. His other works in Hindi are Janki Mangal and Parvati Mangal. In his writings, he insists the duty of a son to his parent, duty of a student to his teacher and duty of a king to his people. Tulsi Das was a Saryu Parina Brahmin by birth and was born in 1532 AD in Raipur in the Banda district of Uttar Pradesh, India, during the reign of Mughal Emperor Akbar. He lived permanently and died in the city of Varanasi. The Tulsi Ghat in Varanasi is named after him. He founded the Sankat Mochan Temple dedicated to Hanuman in Varanasi believed to stand at the place where he had the site of Hanuman. Tulsidas started the Ramlila plays, a folk theatre adaptation of the Ramayana. He has been acclaimed as one of the greatest poets in Hindi, Indian and world literature. The impact of Tulsidas and his works on the art culture and society in India is widespread and is seen to date in vernacular language. Ramlila plays Hindustani classical music, popular music and television series. Now we are going to discuss the meaning of the word Tulsi Das. The word Tulsi Das is a compound of two Sanskrit words, Tulsi and Das. Tulsi, which is an Indian variety of the basil plant considered auspicious by Vaishnavas, the devotees of God Vishnu and his avatars like Rama, and Dasa, which means a slave or a servant, and by extension, a devotee. Tulsi Das thus means a servant of the plant Tulsi. Now we are going to discuss the incarnation of Valmiki. Tulsidas is believed to be a reincarnation of Valmiki. In the Hindu scripture Bhavisho Yotar Purana, the god Shiva tells his wife Parvati how Valmiki, who got a boon from Hanuman to sing the glory of Rama in vernacular language, will incarnate in future in the Kali Yug. Nabhadas wrote in the Bhakt Tamal literally means the garland of saints that Tulsi Das was the incarnation of Valmiki in the Kali Yuga. The Ramanandi sect believes that it was Valmiki himself 
who incarnated as Tulsidas in the Kali Yuga. Now we are going to discuss his birth and saintly life. Tulsidas was born to Hulsi and Atma Ram Shukla Dube in Raipur, Uttar Pradesh, India in 1532 AD. He was known as Tulsi Ram or Ram Bola during his childhood. He was a Saryu Parina Brahmin by birth and it is said that Tulsi Das did not cry at the time of his birth and was born with 32 teeth intact. Although Tulsi Das childhood was one of poverty and suffering, he was a devout follower of Lord Rama and was taught by his guru Narhari Das during his days at Sukra Khet. Now we are going to study about the initiation from guru and learning. At the age of 5 years, Rambola was adopted by Narhari Das, a Vaishnav ascetic of Ramananda's monastic order, who believed to be the fourth disciple of Ramanand or alternately the disciple of Ananta Acharya. He was given the Virakta Diksha, Vairagi initiation with the new name of Tulsi Das. Tulsi Das narrates the dialogue that took place during the first meeting with his guru in a passage in the Vinaya Patrika. When he was seven years old, his Upanayana sacred thread ceremony was performed by Narhari Das on the fifth day of the bright half of the month of Mag, January, February at Ayodhya, a pilgrimage site related to Rama. Tulsita stated his learning at Ayodhya. After some time, Narhari Das took him to a particular Varha Kshetra, a holy place with temple dedicated to Varha, the boar avatar of Vishnu, where he first narrated the Ramayana to Tulsi Das. Tulsi Das mentions this in the Ram Charit Manas. Tulsi Das later came to the sacred city of Varanasi and studied Sanskrit grammar, four Vedas, six Vedangas, Jyotish and the six schools of Hindu philosophy over a period of 15 to 16 years from Guru Shishya Santana who was based at the Panch Ganga Ghat in Varanasi. Shish Santana was a friend of Narhari Das and a renowned scholar on literature and philosophy. After completing his studies, Tulsi Das came back to his birthplace, Raipur, with the permission of Shish Santana. Here, he found that his family was no more, with his parents dead. Tulsi Das performed the Shraddha ceremony, which deals with the giving offerings to the ancestors of his parents. He started living in his ancestral home and narrating the Katha story of Ramayan in Chitrakoot. Now we are going to discuss from family man to ascetic. Tulsi Das went on to marry Buddhimati, also known as Ratnavali, from whom he had a son named Tark. He was passionately attached to his wife Buddhimati until the day she uttered these words. If you de would develop for Lord Rama even half the love that you have for my filthy body, you would certainly cross the ocean of samsara and attain immortality and eternal bliss. These words pursed his heart. He abandoned home, became an ascetic and spent 14 years visiting various sacred places. It is said that Tulsi Das met Lord Hanuman and through him had a vision of Lord Ram. Now we are going to discuss the travels of Tulsi Das. After renunciation, Tulsi Das spent most of his time at Varanasi, Prayag, Ayodhya and Chitrakoot, but visited many other nearby and far off places. He travelled across India to many places, studying different people, meeting saints and sadhus, meditating. The Mool Gosai Charit gives an account of his travels to the four pilgrimages of Hindus, Badrinath, Dwarka, Puri, Rameshwaram and the Himalayas. 
he visited the Mansarovar Lake in current day Tibet, where tradition holds he had darshan sight of the Kaka Subandhi, the crow, who is one of the four narrators in the Ram Charit Manas. Now, we are going to discuss the darshan of Lord Hanuman and Lord Rama to Tulsidas. Tulsidas hints at several places in his works that he had met face to face with Hanuman and Ram. The detailed account of his meetings with Hanuman and Ram are given in the Bhakti Ras Bodhini of Priya Das. According to Priya Das account, Tulsi Das would pour some water at the base of a banyan tree when he passed that way after his morning ablutions. A spirit that was suffering the effects of past evil deeds lived on that same tree. Tulsi Das offering relieved the spirit of his agony. The spirit was very much pleased with Tulsi Das. Wanting to express gratitude to Tulsi, the spirit said, O man, get a boon from me. Tulsi Das replied, Let me have darshan of Lord Ram. The spirit said, Go to the Hanuman temple. There Hanuman comes in the guise of a leper to hear the Ramayan as the first hearer and the leaves the place last of all. Get hold of him. He will help you. The next day, Tulsi Das identified the man who answered to the description and fell at his feet. The old leper told Tulsi Das to go to Chitrakoot, where he would have the darshan of Sri Ram. Accordingly, Tulsi Das met Hanuman and through his grace had darshan or vision of Lord Ram. It is well known that Hanuman is always present wherever the name Ram is being uttered. Tulsi Das remained in Chitrakoot making sandal paste and giving it to the devotees who came there. One day while he was making the paste, Sri Ram appeared in front of him and said, Baba, give me some sandal paste. Tulsi Das remained in Samadhi for three days. This was the first time he experienced Samadhi and that through the darshan of Sri Ram himself. Now we are going to discuss the wanderings and miracles by Tulsi Das. Tulsi Das lived in Ayodhya for some time and then shifted to Varanasi. He once went to Vrindavan to visit the temples of Lord Krishna. Seeing the statue of Krishna, he said, how shall I describe thy beauty, O Lord? But Tulsi Das will bow his head only when you take a bow and arrow in your hands. The Lord revealed himself before Tulsi Das in the form of Lord Ram with bow and arrows. It is believed that Tulsi Das' blessings once brought the dead husband of a poor woman back to life. The Mughal emperor in Delhi came to know of this miracle and sent for Tulsi Das, asking the saint to perform some miracles. He declined saying, I have no superhuman powers, I know only the name of Ram, only to see himself behind the bars. Tulsi Das then prayed to Lord Hanuman as countless powerful monkeys invaded the royal court. The emperor released him from prison asked Tulsi Das to pardon him. Now we are going to discuss the immortal works of Tulsi Das. Tulsi Das wrote 12 books, the most famous being the Hindi Ramayana, the Ram Charit Manas, that is read and worshipped with great reverence in every Hindu home in northern India. An inspiring book, it contains sweet couplets in beautiful rhyme in praise of Lord Rama. Vinaya Patrika is another important book written by Tulsi Das. Now we are going to discuss his last days. Towards the end of his life, Tulsi Das suffered from very painful boils that affected his arms. At this time, he wrote the Hanuman Bahuk, which begins with a verse in praise of Hanuman's strength, glory and virtue and is followed by a prayer to relieve him of his unbearable arm pain. 
the disease was cured tulsidas left his mortal body and entered the abode of immortality and eternal bliss in 1623 ad at the age of 91 he was cremated at asi ghat by the ganga in the holy city of varanasi banaras we are going to discuss about his literary life tulsidas started composing poetry in sanskrit in varanasi on the prahlad ghat tradition holds that all the verses that he composed during the day would get lost in the night this happened daily for 8 days on the 8th night shiva whose famous kashi vishwanath temple is located in varanasi is believed to have ordered tulsidas in a dream to compose poetry in the vernacular instead of sanskrit tulsidas woke up and saw both shiva and parvati who blessed him shiva ordered tulsidas to go to ayodhya and compose poetry in avadhi shiva also predicted that tulsidas poetry would crucify like the sam ved in the ram charitmanas tulsidas hints at having the darshan of shiva and parvati in both dream and awakened state now we going to discuss the literary works of tulsidas 12 works are widely considered by biographers to be written by tulsidas six major works and six minor works based on the language of the works they have been classified into two groups as follows avadhi works ramcharitmanas ramalal nahachu bharwai ramayana parvati mangal janaki mangal and ramagya parshna braj bhasha works krishna gitavali gitavali kavitavali dohavali vairagya sandhipani and vinayak patrika besides these 12 works four more works are popularly believed to be composed by tulsidas which include hanuman chalisa hanuman ashtak hanuman bahuk and tulsi satsai now we going to discuss about ram charit manas the composition of the ram charit manas was perhaps tulsidas own sadhana his act of prayer and offering it is an expression of creativity that blends the inner experience expressed in the form of legend through the medium of poetry he wrote for 2 years 7 months and 26 days and completed it in november december on the anniversary of shri ram's marriage to sita he then returned to varanasi glowing with the bhakti inflamed during the period of writing the devotional epic and began to share his ineffable experience with others because of tulsidas good demeanor loving personality and exquisite devotion people would gather around him in large numbers now we going to discuss the contributions of tulsidas at that time there were four major secretive cults that cultivated the practice of supernatural powers the vedic sacrificial the tantric the nath and the manubhava tulsidas teachings bailed out religion from this pitfall and made it plain and simple he emphasized living a virtuous life and developing human perfection as opposed to supernatural achievement opposition to left hand practices with his devotion and teachings tulsidas provided an alternative to the cults that showed an inclination for debauchery tulsidas placed before the people the ideal of chaste grihastha life introduction of an ideal to emulate tulsidas presented a picture of human perfection achievable by common people through which one could uplift and divinize one's own character he never became attracted to miracles or money he did not preach any particularized doctrine nor did he found a sect or school yet his pure life and enchanting forceful and touching poetry have cast a permanent spell on society 
in the end we can say Goswami Tulsidas has earned the monumental stature as a popular poet, reformer, philosopher and saint due to his deep understanding of the Hindu religious philosophy and folklore. A true and devoid disciple of Lord Ram, he popularized in vernacular language the essence of the epic Ramayan for the benefit of the masses who were not conversant with the classical Sanskrit language. He advocated and preached a chaste, simple married life and asked people to shun a debauch life, which was of temptations and sinful. Being the creator of the literary work Ram Charit Manas, he resides in the hearts of religious and pious people. Thank you.